like you um, did all that, and that was your work. I think. My wife is so awesome to be able to be ready in and out of season. Amen. That's what God is calling us to be. Reaction to what happened to give it back to God in any which way. So when Pastor Joe asked me he's going to go to the judo tournament, and he said, you know, and I said, okay, I got this. And I really didn't have anything yet, but I said, okay, Pastor Joe. And, um, and just a moment later, I realized that Pastor Joe preaches on these big events, Mother's Day. And I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be like a little, little ant or crab trying to explain something to God, you know, how wonderful mom is. But I wanted, I, I have a good mom, my wife just said, an awesome mom. But I wanted to speak on the moms in humanity for the world. And this is what God had planned for the world. And I'll start off with the first mom. But before I speak, I want to thank God, Father in heaven, Lord Jesus Christ, for His plan. For His wonderful plan for women being moms. Grandmoms, great grandmoms, aunties, uh, counselors, confident, confidants. I thank you very much for the moms that are helpers in the kitchen, helpers in the yard, helpers. I thank you, Father in heaven, for your plan. The main name of my sermon will be uh, A Mother's Love. And I like when uh, Wendy mentioned A Mother's Love. And I thought, oh, it's such a big subject. Mother's love is so vast. It's almost like all the clouds in the ocean in the sky. But I wanted to start off with the first, would be Eve. And I don't know about anybody who's named Eve, but most parents don't name their children Eve. It's because of maybe what happened in the garden. But the, where I wanted to go with Eve is she's the mother. She had three boys. And where I wanted to go with Eve is being one of the foremost and the most recognized mom in Genesis is that she taught her children to worship God. And in their worship was the best fruit and the best animals. One was in the garden, one was in the field. As parents, this is where you want to be. Your children worshiping God. Amen. Our children worshiping God, then there's a God reacting to their worship. Mm -hmm. So there's this thing going on with the kids. And with our first mama, Eve, she had this going on. And all my life I said, oh, Eve, she's the one that for a deceit. But guess what? Adam had full, well, knowledge of what's going on. He was going along with the deception. But I thank God because the point I wanted to make of this, she had. Men in her family, her children, knew how to worship God. And that's Eve. The second one is Sarah. I look at Sarah. It's Abraham's wife. She was Sarah. God, God changed her name to Sarah. She didn't have a baby for so long. And then she had Hagar, her maiden, lied with her husband, had Ishmael. And then with Ishmael was born Islam. And with her children, there was Judaism and Christianity under one mom. So under the umbrella of one mom, you have three world religions, three big religions. And we fall under the umbrella of Jesus Christ, Christianity. But to appreciate one mom having these billions of people serving and looking at the sky. Herself. She didn't have a, like, you know, she had to go with it, um, Abraham, all over the place. And I want to thank God because 
she went with him no matter what. And he had to go out and get this new pasture lands, and this lady stick with her, and then I'm looking at her going, like, this lady stick with Abraham, going, gosh. The commonality between Islam, Christianity, and Judaism is there up to, up to Abraham. And when you look at these great religions that have this divide, there's a common denominator. And it's this woman that was a mom, her name is Sarah. Sarah. And you go, ah, a wonderful mom. That's what I picked up from them, looking into Sarah's life. And I thank God because a lot of times we think we had that as parents. But when you see, when, when our next generations look back, and then we see how good the generation before, a thousand generations before, had laid out examples of a motherhood. Oh, it's, like, it's like far ahead. But as we do things that we do, you will be honored as being a holy and righteous woman of God. Because the, the, the full term of a woman being all of this motherhood thing and all of the pain and all of the stuff that's going on is not seen by you. It will be actually seen by your great great grand. And the, the thing, the story about, or the saying that they say that apple doesn't fall too far from the tree and that a righteous tree cannot have bad fruit. And then as people would look at your great-great-grandchildren, they will know that their great-great-grandmother or great-grandmother was planted next to the river of life. And this is the holy water of Jesus Christ. And then the abundance flow in the next generation. And this is what we, we get. We get this stuff from Sarah. And the next the next lady I wanted to talk about is Mother Mary. From Eve to Sarah, related to Mother Mary, a Jesus, the line of Jesus. And all of these guys are so related that sometimes if we look at why there's war, they're all related. We're all related, and I was when I was doing this study, I was like, gosh. People are giving up their sons and daughters <coughs> in war for their cousins. And this is how backward the world is. And in humanity, God is saying, we have, we're all related. In love, we can do this. This is the world coming against God's will. And that's why it's important for us to continue God's will in love. The very people that spore, the very people in the world are fighting against each other, and the religions are the same, they're fighting against each other, and you're going, what kind of ideology is this? And you would sacrifice your son or your daughter for this? That's why it's important that we have all Jesus in our lives. And when we look at parents, and especially our mothers for today, we have the, the grace that mothers have during the most heinous crimes. And when we look at Mother Mary, um, she was almost stoned because they didn't really realize that God got her pregnant. They didn't, and in those days when you get pregnant and you're not, you know, you're married, you're not supposed to like, you know, you, they'll, they'll take you out of the field and just stone you in that culture. You know, you're, you're fooling around with somebody else. But see, Mary almost died a few times. And then also, um, taking the trek with Joseph to Egypt, traveling 70 miles on a donkey to visit, visit Elizabeth. Who would be traveling 70 miles on a donkey pregnant? But this is Mary going through all that what she did. Mary ended up seeing her son on the cross. No, that's pretty bad. If you 
were associated with Jesus back then, they would probably crucify you also. That's why he was, when they asked Peter, Peter said, no, no, I, I'm not a bad guy. And Jesus told him, you're going to betray me. The cock will, cock will pull twice. But Mary stood under the cross of her son. Death could have been upon her. Anybody related to this man could have been dealt with it in the same way. We know back in the Roman times, anybody who's associated with the king of the Jews, sedition. And there was no other king back then but the king of Rome. Who was it? I'm not sure who was that. I don't know who was the king of that back then. Caesar. So, here's Mary, again, laying her life on the line for her child. And this is what moms do. We know um, that birds doing a, a fire, a forest fire, they'll, they'll find, they're walking through this fire, it's a story about how much birds love their children. The mom would be toasted, going to the fire fire, and then there's the children, cheek, the cheek, cheeks of the, the bird would be alive under the dead mom. And these are just birds. But you can imagine how deep the love of your mom had for you. They would do things for you in a horrible, they would look in disciplinary action. So when we pray for our children, we pray for a hedge of thorns, that they run into the hedge of thorns, God, that they will turn around and come back to the fold. And we continue to pray for them so they would not be able to experience the things that they do if they're doing the things, the wrong things. But I thank God because Mary continued the walk. And then today, we can look at Mary and say thank you for doing what you did as an example for us because she bore Jesus Christ. I thank God because Mary had a whole different role to play than these other Marys. And that was to continue the love of God in humanity. Amen. And even though Even though the world is the way the world is today, for the love of our, our women that has gone before us, Mara, Sarah, and Eve, is God's plan for love. He's showing us love. And if we can get the tip of the iceberg on studying some of the women for the sake of humanity, and for the sake of humanity, there is stuff going on for religion or religious sake. But for the love of humanity, it's just the love of God sharing His pure love. No walls, unconditional. And when we look at unconditional love, there is no color, there is no creed, there is no smell, there is no stench in love. You smell nothing. We know where we have to be, and it's the sweetest vomit you ever ate. If you gave someone mouth to mouth resuscitation, resuscitation to res res resuscitate someone that needs to be brought back to life, how would you not taste? It's because of the love of Christ. How would you not smell? It's because of the love of Christ. For you to go and, and experience. things that you, you, you don't usually experience. It's because of Christ. He will begin to show you the colors in that, the things that you, that you do that you don't normally do for His sake, the least of His. God is calling us to do things that the normal mom wouldn't do is to go out and do the love of Christ. 
My last um, mom I want to speak about is Mother Teresa. And she was a nun, and she spent, uh, they called her Mother Teresa of Calcutta. One thing about this lady is um, she was in ministry to the nun, and um, being able to um, hear stories of her firsthand, I met people that knew Mother Teresa. So they told me the stories. And, you know, testimonies. One of them is, uh, his name is Father Petrie, spent 25 years in Calcutta. And another one is just a friend I met at a, at a conference. And I wanted to talk about this one friend that he went over to help Mother Teresa, and she had a limp. And he goes, Mother Teresa, by the limp, she said, my shoes. And he says, what's wrong with the shoes? She gives the best shoes to the needy. She takes the bad shoes. That's Mother Teresa. Same guy, the children that he um, was ministering to along with Mother Teresa. Okay. One kid's birthday, he said, oh, let's go down and get ice cream. He goes down and get ice cream, and the one kid runs down the road, the rest of the kids goes, we got ice cream. And everybody has one lick. You know, usually when you get your ice cream, guess what, it's your ice cream. <laughs> but this is the kind of kids that um, Mother Teresa has been uh, helping in Calcutta. Besides, um, ladies in prostitution, what she would do rescue was also rescue the dying. When there's somebody dying on the road, there was so much money um, to be spent to create a person. She would take people in, um, the guys on the road, and take care of them. And it was such a uh, profound uh, job that she was doing because she wanted the people that are dying on the streets die with dignity. Die with somebody around them. And this story, I'm like, wow. You know, I've never experienced this story. Because what we know here on Molokai is a different. But I thank God because that's the story that was given to me that I can share. There are elderly, elderly around that need to die with dignity. And if there's a visitation that needs to be done during a time uh, for our elderly, so be it. That our Lord will be able to use you as an example for Mother Teresa. Well, we know that motherhood carries this, this glories, these victories. In every battle, the battle has to go on, and the battle is going on, and the battle will continue because the mothers that know Jesus Christ will suffer this power and knowing that God has his hidden hand. And once you understand that God has a hidden hand and some of the challenges that we have, we'll begin to spin some of the negativity around and have something positive from something so heinous. Because what Jesus did at the cross took the most ugliest thing and turned it around for us to receive the beautiful blood, forgiving blood of Jesus Christ at the cross. Amen. So we see that. And Mary at his feet, showing her the love, gives us the battle, the victory in the battle, that every mother's pain and every mother's challenges is for you. And for you, is for you. Just look at Christ. I, well, my wife spoke about my um, my mom. 
And that's from a daughter-in-law's view. And I, I love it. I didn't yell. I did not. I don't have to speak about my mom. But my grandmother, she lived down Kalawaha, and she always decorated the, the Lady Seven Sorrows Church. She would walk around, she would get up, my grandma, she would get up, and she would look for all the flowers, and if there's nothing in bloom, she'd look for something green and decorate. And I'm like, gosh, I do that too. I do that too. I'm, 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 I said, why do that? My grandma used to do that. So there's certain things that we do that we're not going to realize. Like, after grandma's gone, we could be doing things that our grandparents, our parents would be doing. And that's some of the stuff that Jesus gives us is that hidden hand of why you and who, who you are, and that's your worldview and how you would raise. But being able to look at your mom's mom, grandma's grandma's, and giving them the glory because we know what they're going through. I knew what my mom was going through with six boys. I knew what my mom was going through raising her one daughter. And being able and seeing her constantly being able to have her prayer meetings and putting us and all the children and the community on the prayer list. But being able to give the challenges that we have to our God. We constantly seeing our moms praying for us. I like this. We constantly saw Lily Wokalani praying for her nation. We constantly saw her praying for our country. We constantly see our grandmothers praying for our county and our towns and our and the areas we live. We constantly see our brothers and sisters in the church praying for the church. And this is where you as mom and dad, mom, especially for today, color my this is where your effect and the ripple effect goes throughout the world. This is you. All of you have gone through. Continue to pray. Continue to do the work in the church. Continue to do the work in the family. Because the cause and effect of Jesus Christ in this world is needed. The cause and effect of the Spirit of God is needed. Because that's the only plan He has. Jesus Christ, the moms, and the support of the dads of the moms. That's all we've got. Parents that love moms. There's no other set of couples that can go forth and do the work of Jesus Christ. And you know the story that or the, the scripture that said that in the harvest field, the workers are few. It is few. But it's a glorious time to be in the harvest field when he returns. And he said, if you're in my harvest field when I return, so shall you be with me. Amen. Amen. Amen Jesus. I want to encourage moms that are going through things. And they're going through things 24-7. I read a book on how women don't sleep. I have experienced that seeing my life. Concerned about the children. They don't sleep. They don't stop. For men, they work, they get tired of sleep, they get up. For women, their antennas, their consciousness are around them night and day. And you wonder, how could a woman function without sleep? Then you get the aha moment. It's God. That's the way God had made her. God had made her to run a little sleep. And I thank God for the creation of women, not higher or below man, but equal. When men are sleeping, the wife is watching. In Jesus' mighty name, this is your word of the day. God bless you, and have a happy Mother's Day. I'd like to make an announcement. Next week we're going to have a, a get-together from Mama's. Um, we delayed it because um, 
Pastor Joe is going to not be here, and Sister Martha wasn't going to be here. So just as an uh, announcement, I'd like to bring up the praise and worship team. Love someone on the left and right, and the Holy Spirit be upon you during this day. Perfection in Jesus Christ and motherhood is upon you. Amen. Amen. Amen.